Please call the page. Dr. Johnson to ICU. Dr. Johnson to ICU. Dr. Howard to admitting. Dr. Howard to admitting. Dr. Norman to pediatrics. Dr. Norman to pediatrics. Dr. Thomas, please call the page. Dr. Thomas, please call the page. surgery and I wanted to get you before you left for work. Yeah. You got me, Doc. You alone? Yes, thanks to you. An emergency laminectomy came in last night just at quitting time. It took me four hours. I'll make it up to you tonight, though. Uh, no, you won't. I'm busy tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm having the girls over. Can't you break it? Yes, but... Uh... I wouldn't dream of it. We planned it weeks ago. Yes, well. Dr. Gordon to pediatrics. Dr. Gordon to pediatrics. Dr. Martin to ER. Good morning, Dr. Warren. How do we feel today, Mrs. Dobson? Um, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty good. Any changes since we talked yesterday? Well, the food is worse. <laughs> but the medicine you've been giving me seems to be doing the trick. Good. Now, Thelma, let's go. Excuse me. Good morning, dear. Where have you been? I've been holding this since breakfast, waiting to give it to you before it wilted. Straight from my garden. My sister Martha picked it for you yesterday. That may well be the prettiest rose I've ever seen. And it smells even better. Thank you. If I may, Mrs. Thompson. Dr. Lessing, did you review yesterday's angio? Yes, doctor. And your analysis was absolutely correct. I was amazed. The angio shows a large AVM right in the middle of the left temporal region. At first, I thought it was just another tumor. Wait a minute. What's going on here? What's an AVM? We call it arterial venous malformation, but it's nothing for you to worry about. Then you can certainly tell me what it is. Well, it's a kind of tangle of a uh, small blood vessel. You sure it's not a brain tumor, doctor? There's no malignancy involved here. Fortunately, this is something we can get rid of. With an operation on my brain? Don't look so worried, Mrs. Dobson. It so happens you've got yourself an expert in dealing with this sort of thing. You've got yourself an expert in getting through 72 years without an operation. And you're going to get through many more years, too, after surgery. Better than ever. You'd like that, wouldn't you? That depends, Doctor. That really and truly depends. We're going to fix you up just fine. trying to say, Doctor? Come to the point. Well, it, it just seems like a pretty big operation for a woman of her age to have to undergo. The AVM's pretty big, too. And I'd say that her advanced age, if anything, makes the technique that I'm proposing even more acceptable. I've done this procedure many times in stroke cases with 60% success. Miss Richards, have the appropriate uh, consent for it. Thrown up immediately. Yes, Doctor. Jay Clevel, we're about my uh, performance back there. I'd rather not discuss it. Oh, what did Warren mean when he said that Mrs. Dobson's age would make the risk of surgery more acceptable? Well, he meant that at 72, there aren't a lot of years left no matter what. It's a big AVM, too, isn't it? Ellen. Doctor. George, Dr. Warren. Hi. George Kowalski. I'm a fan. Yeah? Is it true you got more than a million dollars when you went to the World Hockey Association? Yeah, that's right, Doc. And like a dummy, I went out and blew it. How are you feeling? Terrific. No way a hit in the head's gonna keep me off the ice. Dr. Steiner, 
Patient is a 32-year-old right-handed professional hockey player. Last night during the game, he was struck in the right occipital region by a hockey stick and rendered unconscious. Didn't even bleed, Doc. A few minutes later, he regained consciousness. Although initially lethargic, has showed progressive improvement since. The skull film is normal. Diagnosis of mild concussion. I think we should be able to send him home later in the day. Why? Would you close your eyes now, George? And stretch your arms out for me all the way with the palms up. His past history? Patient is in excellent health. Uh, three other similar injuries in the last five years, all showing a similar pattern of recovery. Drop your arms, George. Now, without moving your eyes from left to right, I want you to open them and look directly at my nose. Notice anything unusual? Like what? The way I'm dressed. No. That's the way doctors dress. Any idea what might be the matter with this patient whom uh, Dr. Steiner here is so anxious to send home? Mm, sir, with a left-handed drift and a hemianopic visual defect, it could possibly be a cerebral contusion. Um, uh, might be uh, subdural. May I assume that you're up to ordering an echo for this patient? Yes, sir. Fine. I suggest you do it immediately. Okay, George. All I'm asking for is a couple of extra aids for this shift. I've got two nurses out sick today. You are not the only head nurse with problems, now. I'm short-handed on every floor of this week. I've got four new admits, plus two coming out of IC. Make that three of ICU, Miss Richards. But, Dr. Freeland, I... I'm moving a new patient appeal. That's some very intricate surgery, and I want her to have the best care possible. But Ellen was just telling me she's already short-handed. Then uh, she'll need some extra help. Yes, Doctor. Thanks. Well, you may not be so grateful after you get a look at that new patient. Really? That bad? Come on, I'll show you. Oh, I can't leave the desk alone. Uh, this is an emergency. I'm coming, I'm coming. Dr. Allen to OB. Dr. Allen to OB. What kind of surgery was it? You'll Dr. see. Williams, please call the page. Dr. Williams, please call the page. I've never seen you carry on this much about one of your patients. That's the first time for everything, I guess. Broad. Well, I guess, I guess the patient uh, had a miraculous recovery and checked out. Ned, will you stop? Somebody will come in. That's the yeah, well, let them. I'll tell them I'm being in here. It's your fault. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, hey, I was willing to wait until tonight, but you're dumping me because a couple of the girls were coming over. That's hardly been good for my ego. <laughs> you really are a male chauvinist. Come here. <laughs> Will you stop that? I know you help it if I can't keep my hands off you. Come on. <laughs> stop. Oh. Well, get closer, and I'll press the emergency button. I swear it. This is an emergency. I mean it. Okay, okay. Now, if I can wait that long, what about tomorrow night? Okay, come for dinner. I'll bring the wine. Imported. I'm an expensive date. Hey, is what I just heard true? That you ran for public office? And will do again come the next election. Way to keep politicians honest is to run against them every chance you get. <laughs> I intend to do just. Uh, those are the consent forms for the operation, aren't they? Yes. But you want me to sign? Well, Dr. Warren does, yes. How can I sign anything when I don't know exactly what it's supposed to accomplish? It's to remove the malformation. I know that, dear. I also know that at best, I have just a few years left. And the fewer they get, the more precious they become. This is a 
make the decision that I've got to make a decision you can help me make. I can't advise you, Emily. I'm a nurse, and it's not my place to give medical opinions. In this world, no one should be relegated to a place, Ellen, dear. I'm asking you as a friend. Please, ask Dr. Warren himself. Ask him about anything and everything that occurs to you. He's a fine neurosurgeon, as good as there is. No, no matter what he says, no matter what anyone says, you don't have to sign these forms. Ellen, listen. I can't, really, I can't. I do have other patients, you know, and I'm way behind schedule this morning, but I'll be back later. Ellen. <sighs> Somebody. Oh, please, Ted, I can't even stand the noise of the squeezing of this lemon. Ah, paying the piper, are we? Overpaying. Oh. You know, it's one of the reasons why we'll never make it on a permanent basis. You're just too deliriously happy in the morning. You know, you sure kick that old cliché in the head. What old cliché? That old nurses want to marry doctors. Oh. Or is it just this doctor? Oh, Ted, you're not the reason I won't get married. I'm the reason. I've been there before. I played house and lost. Played married lady and lost. And no matter what, I never want to go through that kind of hurt again. Well, who does? Hey, getting hurt is part of being alive. You've got to be either paralyzed or dead if all you're interested in is avoiding pain. Look, if we did get hitched, our lives would stay exactly the same as they are now. Wrong. We wouldn't see each other any more often. I'd still be head nurse on five. You'd still spend most of your time in surgery. I mean, what difference could a judge saying a few words over us give us? Commitment. For how long? Who knows? Maybe forever. And maybe for a lot less. Right, maybe just a couple of years, but they could be some terrific years. Hockey player, he's not responding. <laughs> Pupil's fix looks like an acute subdural. I'll get an IV started. All right, give me a straight blade laryngoscope and a 34 intubation tube. Okay. The 
get the respirator. What's happening? Get the respirator across the hall of room 11. Is the patient I wanted to send home? Jake! All right, get the urea. Type and cross match him for a couple of units. Well, where's the respirator? Let's go, Tim. Okay, come on, babe. It's a subdural. We gotta drain it right away. I'll notify OR. Yeah, Jake, you'll assist me, okay? Yeah, okay, but how many shots do I get to kill this guy? Jake, don't give me any of that garbage, all right? Let's just go to work. He should be coming out this any moment. Seems stable. See? Moving extremities now. Thanks, Phil. Sure. How is he, Ted? Well, he's never going to play hockey again, but he's fine. How did Jake do? <laughs> Just nervous enough to guarantee his being one hell of a surgeon someday. That's all I wanted to hear. Now, do you see what I mean? About what? One bad experience doesn't necessarily mean the end of the world. Not all bad, I hope. Oh, no. Uh, I mean, uh, from Dr. Loomis, our family doctor. He has nothing but the highest regard for you. Well, he's a splendid physician, as well as a very good, good friend. Uh, Emily, have you had uh, the opportunity to read these? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, I think you'd better run along now, dear. Dr. Warren and I have some things to discuss. Uh, well, I just... All right. I'll ask the nurse for a vase on my way out. It was nice meeting you, Doctor. You have to understand Martha, Dr. Warren. She's sweet, but she's just a bit immature, shall we say. I think if she heard brain operation, she would go right to pieces. I understand. Well, then, you have some questions for me. Yes, indeed. The surgery you're talking about scares the living daylights out of me. Naturally. Hello, Ellen, dear. It's not the operation itself that's frightening, even if I don't survive. I've had a good full life. Then what are you worried about? Uh, surviving as a vegetable. Mrs. Dobson, I think you're over-dramatizing. No, 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 no. I'm being realistic, Doctor. I can't be dependent on anyone, especially Martha. I have to have all my faculties. If I'm going to go on living otherwise, I don't want to go on living. But you'll be fine when it's all over. You'll see. How long would I have without the operation? That would be possibly up to a year if we really controlled your blood pressure. Would I be able to function normally during uh, whatever time I had? Very likely, but I believe to even consider such an option would be criminal. Emily, I've operated in many similar cases with great success. Now, to me, the, the choice seems clear. I need more time to think this over. Of course, but uh, not too long now. Time's of the essence. You're friendly with that Dobson woman, aren't you? Yes, Doctor. I admire her very much. Good. I want you to do everything you can to convince her that this operation is necessary. Yes, Doctor. There's nothing we can do. Yes, there is, but we won't. The only way we're going to get anywhere is to take some action. We should go to the wall on this thing, strike if necessary. Oh, don't be silly. That's not going to happen on my floor, Jean. No oh, way. I know. You're too chicken. 
Don't you see? You're no different uh, from uh, Warren. Warren. Both of you are Brilliant. willing to use Emily Dobson for your own ego needs. Well, neither of you are going to use me to do it. Ellen, with your talent for reading motivations, they should transfer you to the psych ward. Look, if you want to strike, go right ahead. But you're not going to have backing from me or from any of the other nurses. Oh, I know. And who's going to suffer for it? The Emily Dobsons of the world. That's who. What do you mean? Just going through the motions in me. I know. I'm sorry. Is it something that I did? Oh, don't be silly. Something I didn't do. No, it's something I'm not doing. About a patient on my floor. The old lady. She's not an old lady, Ted. She's a wonderful woman of 72 who's been pushed into an operation she shouldn't have. Sweetheart. If you're going to start worrying about every patient on your floor, it's going to ruin your sex life. But Emily Dobson, she's... she's not just another patient. She's special. So is the, uh, the hockey player. What's his name? Kowalski. Kowalski. The famous athlete, a star. You know, I saw him play once, and he... was the strongest, fastest thing on ice. And today, he's finished. But once I leave the hospital, I can't worry about his tragedy or anybody else's tragedy. Otherwise, I become an emotional zombie, and that wouldn't be fair to my future patients. But I want to prevent a possible tragedy if I can. Then do something about it. Speak up, as long as you feel you're right. But I'm a nurse, and being right won't stop them from kicking me out of the hospital. So what if they did? Oh, that's all right for you to say, doctor. Oh, here we go again. No commitments all the way down the line. You're afraid to get married. You won't take a stand. Ellen, Don, please, you got to get involved. Honey, please, don't just stand by the rest of your life. Is this how we're going to spend the whole evening talking shop? Oh, I'm sorry, Ted. I'm just so frustrated. She's frustrated. I really don't know what to do. I do. Let's take it from the top. <laughs> Come on. Forget your troubles. Come on. Get happy. Come on, then. No, I... I like the change of atmosphere. Uh. Ellen, I'm glad you're here. I need first aid. Oh, where did you get that? Pediatrics. Some little brat bit me. Being a surgeon, you should be used to the sight of blood, Doctor. Well, not when it's mine. <laughs> Let's hope the kid isn't rabid. Well, I don't think that's very funny. He might be. Ow, that stings. You want me to kiss it? What's going on here? Red alert. Remember that I told you this morning that Emily Dobson refused to breakfast? Mm-hmm. Well, well, now she won't... Steroids. She won't take her steroids. Um, yeah, Jeannie, you close this up for me, will you? Sure. Carefully, please. Oh, absolutely, Doctor. Annie, would you assist me? Doctor. Suture. Uh, scalpel. Scissor. Needle. Yes. Pin. Thread. I think that's sufficient. Very funny, ladies. Very funny. Do you think he needs intensive care? Oh, of course. I'm gonna stay out of pediatrics, Mr. The... Known. Kid's a Kojak fan. <laughs> Emily? Now, what's the matter? Annie said that you were. I know. Roll me up, will you? <clears throat> now, listen. If you don't take that medicine, your symptoms are going to come right back. That's what I figured. You've been avoiding me. No lecture now. I suppose you know I talked to Dr. Warren yesterday. I have this feeling deep down I'm being hoodwinked, am I? Emily, you don't think I should go through with it, do you? Why? Just tell me straight out. You must understand. I can't advise you as to what you should do. It's just that I feel you may not be totally aware of the risks involved. Well, go ahead, dear. It's possible 
that if the operation isn't completely successful, there could be a certain amount of paralysis. Oh. Now, remember, I said it was just a possibility. You've been a nurse how long, Ellen? Seventeen years. That's a long time. You must have seen many people die. Now, Emily, I won't stand for that kind of please. We're too close to each other for a lot of phony posturing. What is it like when someone dies? I mean, what do people think in those last moments? What do they feel? Do they ever want to die? Sometimes. If they're in great pain or very sick. Or very old. <laughs> You're the youngest person I know, Emily. But if they paralyze me or diminish me, I'll be old overnight. There's always a chance that the operation could be a complete success. I know, dear. It's a risk I'd rather not run. The stakes are too high. You know what the alternatives are. If I watch my blood pressure and do everything the doctor says like a good girl, I'll live my life as I've always lived it. I might even have enough time to get next summer flowers planted. Not many people are lucky enough to even have that choice. May I give you a kiss? Why not? Come in. I believe you've been discouraging Emily Dobson. Yes, I have. Have you considered the possibility that you may be denying the opportunity for a significant operation? An operation that might help us learn how to deal with hundreds more, just like this one. But Dr. Warren, what about the patient herself, her feelings? It's her life as it's her death. I happen to be one of the two or three men in all medicine who has made any progress in this area. And that alone indicates that perhaps without even your realizing it, your driving interest is in making further medical advances, which means last factors to be taken into account are the human values. Miss Richards, as a nurse, you have obviously gathered a smattering of medical ignorance. And there's nothing more dangerous to the patient than to this hospital. And to yourself. You know the first question I asked myself when I came to in the recovery room? If you'd ever play ice hockey again, right? No. If I'd survive. Suddenly hockey wasn't nearly as important as staying alive. Well, can you uh, turn over on your side now? Okay. All right, that's all right. I wonder what I'll do for the rest of my life. <laughs> you know, there are lots of 32-year-olds who've never even heard of ice hockey who manage to live long, rich, full lives. You know, I think the only thing I'm going to miss are the ladies. Hi, George. Oh, hi, Andrea. Oh, perhaps I'd better come back a little later, huh? Oh, no, miss. Uh, you come right in. You're just what the doctor ordered. Hi. Hi. In moderate doses for openers, right? Yes, ma'am. Jerry, I don't understand why you've come to me with this. Because you're the head man, that's why. But this is something that the director of nursing should handle. Eric. That nurse stepped way over the line. I've got an important operation at stake here. Isn't there something else at stake? What does that mean? Well, it just seems like uh, maybe it's become a personal thing, that's all. Have you gone crazy? 
along with everyone else around here? Eric, you wouldn't allow the people who cleaned up this office to run it for you. Well, I don't want any nurse standing in the way of my decision. Is that clear? All right, I'll take care of it. One thing you have to say for this nurse, though. She cares. Dr. Warren believes that you're a damaging influence on Mrs. Dobbs. And from what I know, I'd have to agree. Is that what he says? This is incredible. Oh, listen, I understand how you feel about this woman. I don't think you do. I always followed the rules, Ellen. Oh, sure you did, and so have I. Oh, come on, Sylvia. I've been through it all, and so have you. We never fight back. We're trained not to fight back. If you hate it so much, why don't you just quit? So, either I love it or I leave it. Is that it? Ellen, please. Don't try to visit Mrs. Dobson. Don't even try to contact her. If you do, and you're caught, no one will be able to save you. Thanks for the tip. about Emily. Yes, under the circumstances, I feel that um, as her closest relative, you must know, Emily's condition is very serious. She needs brain surgery right away. No. Now, it, now it is not cancerous, but it is causing critical pressure. And that's why we want to operate just as soon as possible. Of course. I understand, but I... But we have a problem. Your sister absolutely refuses to consent to the operation. She does? But why? Well, some patients um, become disoriented in hospitals. And late last night, uh, she wandered out of her room totally delirious. And it took uh, two interns and a nurse to restrain her from leaving. Oh, dear. She's all right now. Now, don't worry. But um, as far as the surgery is concerned, I'm afraid that she's just not able to decide for herself. 
What do we do? Declared incompetent. The forms are right here. Our sister must assign them sometime today. Uh, don't bother. I've already checked. Surgery scheduled for 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. So it's full speed ahead. Maybe yes, and maybe no. Ted, uh, I've taken this thing as far as I can. I, I hate to pull you into it, but you're the only one left I can turn to. I understand, but the problem is I don't know if there's anything I can do. Well, you're a doctor, a fellow neurosurgeon. Maybe Warren will listen to you. I doubt it. Warren and I don't see eye to eye in much of anything. <sighs> okay, then what about Sutton? Now, you've always said you have a good relationship with him. I do, but remember, besides being chief of staff, he's also a doctor. If I go to him, he's going to back Warren. But, Ted, in this case, Warren happens to be wrong. Ellen, look, you've been around long enough to know a doctor just doesn't stick his nose into another man's case. I've created my own bloody monster. Look at how she's carrying on. Oh, I'm really at the end of my rope. So please, Dr. Frankenstein, give your monster a break, huh? Do you know Emily Dobson, Doctor? Uh, no. Never even examined her? Of course not. She's uh, your patient. Exactly. Therefore, I wonder why you're here. What's your interest? Well, I've heard quite a bit about it. From whom? Uh, well, one of the nurses on fire. Ellen Richards. Uh, yes, that's right. With whom you're having quite an affair, I understand. And damn lucky at that, but that's hardly pertinent. Neither is your meddling in a case you know nothing about, Doctor. I call your behavior strictly unprofessional. You're right. It is unprofessional because you are one hell of a doctor, and I truly respect you. But, Doctor, I don't like you. I just don't like you. Dad. Have you ever been treated like a six-year-old delinquent? My fault. I shouldn't have put you through it. Forgive me. You're going to pay dearly for this. Make no mistake about it. What's going on? I don't know. It seems it all started when the aides from OR refused to bring Emily to surgery. What? Why? The consent forms were missing from her file. They were only following the rules. Missing? Just like I said, a little uncivil disobedience can sometimes go a long, long way. <laughs> you won't stop worrying, though. I know. But at least you won't be able to operate at 11. Give us a few hours, at least. So you're saying, Mrs. Brent, that one of these nurses removed the consent form from the file for the specific purpose of preventing this surgery from taking place? Yes. No one else had access. Uh, just a minute here, Eric. As a member of the hospital board, I am not satisfied with one of these nurses. I want to know which nurse. I don't know. I take full responsibility, Mr. Calloway. No, she won't. But we'll take responsibility as a group. Well, you may very well be taking your departure as a group. But before we make that decision, I want to know your reasons. Simply that the patient didn't want the operation. Well, that's simple enough. Is that true? Eric, how long does this have to go on? That the patient is irrational and incompetent to make her own decision. I presented her sister with the facts, and she signed the consent form. Is that true? The fact is, the patient became overwrought and irrational because she was being pressured into having this operation. She was being pressured into not having the operation by you, Miss Richards. That's what unbalanced her. Any pressure is the one thing that could kill that woman without a moment's notice. Doctor, what do you 
all I gave her was a prognosis that you neglected to give her. <laughs> That's ludicrous on the face of it. Why would I do that? Because you're so impatient to make medical history, to write it up in some medical journal, that you're willing to sacrifice the life of a 72-year-old woman. If successful, this operation might save countless lives old people and young people. Now, probably every one of us here in this room now is alive because some doctor, somewhere, once risked a patient's life, not only in order to save it, but to discover something. Fine. That's fine. But I think that patient, or Emily Dobson, or any patient, has the right to decide if she wants to be sacrificed for the benefit of all mankind. If she's to be a, a martyr, then it should be because she wants it, Doctor. Not you. How does she know what she wants if she's incompetent? Damn it, Calloway, these are just a bunch of nurses talking. Try running a hospital without us, doctor. Do you object to an examination of the patient, doctor? I object to being challenged by people who have no particular expertise in the field. Dr. Sutton, I visited Emily Dobson this morning. She is as lucid as anyone in this room. How do you respond to that, Doctor? I don't. Nor do I have to. There are too many other hospitals to appreciate what I have to give without question, without irresponsible interrogation. Doctors are scientists not sentimentalists. In the final analysis, all that progress is, is greater knowledge. And I, quite obviously, can no longer gain that here. Well, where does that leave us? No alternative except that uh, I'll visit Emily Dobson if she is competent. That should be the end of it. And now you bunch of nurses, go back to work. I want to emphasize this is not a precedent. It is a single, isolated incident. A hospital cannot afford the breaking down of discipline, which in plain English means I don't want you second-guessing the doctors in this hospital. Thank you. What about Borman? Is there any way we can keep him? I hope so. I'll talk to him, see what I can do. if I turn up one day to apply for a job as a helper in your garden. Oh. Thank you for giving me a little more life to live. I should be the one to thank you for precisely that. Now, come on, I want to get you down to Dr. Sutton's and then up here and dressed and out of this hospital. I am never going to be examined by another doctor as long as I live. <laughs> Come on, Emily. Dr. Sutton just wants to see if you're competent enough to take care of yourself. Do you think you can pass that test? I'm going to make Albert Einstein seem eager. Now, call him up. Tell him we're on our way. Oh, oh, and uh, uh, while you're about it, uh, get a taxi uh, for me. Because this examination is going to be over in no time flat.
that the old lady would... Excuse me, Miss Emily Dobson, but who went out the operation? That she did. How would you ever manage to pull that miracle off? I took your advice and made a commitment. No kidding. Well, maybe one of these days you'd be willing to make one or two more. Maybe. You off tonight? You? You're late. Right. No, I think I'd better start getting used to your face. Dr. Andrews to admitting. Dr. Gordon to pediatrics. Dr. Martin to ER. Dr. Harris to ICU.